for thoroughness sake, I wanted to bring up a issue that several students have been uh, discussing. If you've gone through all four courses of the CSENT CCNA material, you'll notice that chapter 5 in the Connect Me Network is identical to chapter 11 from the Route and Switch, and that includes all labs. So instead of doing the lab videos over again, I am actually just going to repeat the videos for chapter 11 in Route and Switch with this announcement. Because again, I've gone through steps, I've gone through labs, and they are identical. 100% identical. Chapter 5, NAT, in Connecting Networks, and Chapter 11, NAT, in Routing and Switching Essentials. So again, all the videos for those belong here as well. Thank you. Implementing static and dynamic NAT. So first thing we need to do is let's go ahead and hop on R2. Let's get to our global mode, our global configuration. Enable config T. So first thing we want to do is create a named ACL. We want to call it R2 NAT. So IP access list. It will be a standard one, R2NAT. We want to permit 192.168.10.0 with a wildcard mask of 000255. We want the same thing for 20. And the same thing for 30. All right, so we've done those three steps, and so now we're on step two. Next, we're going to do is we will create an, uh, our pool name, so IP NAT pool. We're going to be calling our pool r2 pool and we're going to have that as 209.165.202.128 we're going to have that go through 209.165.202.130 as it's outlined there we're going to be giving it a net mask of 255.255.255.252 all right, so we created our ACL, and we also created our pool. Next, we need to actually associate the two. So we're going to do IP NAT. Inside, we're giving it a source list of R2 NAT. That's our ACL. We're telling it to pull from the pool of R2 pool, and we are going to have it overload. Overload means we have more addresses, more internal addresses, and we do external addresses, so it will associate with port numbers and whatnot. All right, last thing we have to do is step four. We need to actually configure this on the appropriate interfaces. So here, serial 010 is our only outside. This guy right here is our only outside source. All of these are going to be inside sources. So Ethernet 00, IP NAT, inside, interface serial 00. IP NAT inside, serial 0001, IP NAT inside, last one will be interface serial 0 slash 1 slash 0, IP NAT outside. We mark this one inside, 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 this is our only outside interface. 
All right, so that was our dynamic. We need to create a static one as listed in part two. So how we do that is IP nat inside source. We're gonna be giving it a static. Notice here we're doing a static, not a pool. Here's just a static. That means it's a one-to-one -one mapping. We're gonna be giving this IP address, the static map of 202.131. So anything coming on this IP address will be forwarded to this internal IP address. That way we can have this local resource as outlined right here. All right, so here we're showing 131. Sorry, here we're showing 130. Our instructor guide says 131. But you'll also notice our pool ends at 130. So normally you don't want to map this one to a pool and to a static address. So if we wanted to do this one, realistically, we probably should have 128, 129, 130, that gives us three addresses. 131 is our next fourth address, which that should be fine. So let's go and verify. So from PC1, Let's see if we can go into our internal address. Yes, we can. PC3. Sorry, you know what? This PC1 was our internal one, so let's also double check that 202.131 also takes us there and it does let's see if pc3 our public ip address takes us there yes it does what about from pc4 and they all do so here is one weird thing if you get this if this doesn't work, try your outside address as, so when you did your one-to-one -one NAT rule, change it to 131, because that's how it should be set up, even though these instructions don't tell you that. All right, so that's this lather nutshell. I want to thank you.